Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation as well as Beam and G Drive. Today, as you might be able to tell by the title, we are creating a performance SUV or just an SUV in general that's going to be a bit more on the performance side and by a bit more, I mean a lot more. So we are basing this loosely off of a, a like a, a Range Rover Sport SVR. So something, you know, with a V8, obviously, since we can't have a supercharger, maybe a turbo, maybe just NA, I don't know. Uh, lots and lots of horsepower, all-wheel drive, of course, and just, you know, good looks to match as well. This is going to be rather expensive, and like all my videos, I'm going to try to make this realistic-ish as possible. Uh, we are going to do this Porsche Cayenne-style body. Of course, we can morph it into something a bit more Range Rover-esque. It's just uh, I really want to use the new bodies, but I, for the life of me, cannot get like a good front-end design for any truck or SUV. The new ones, at least. For these ones, I can get a lot better of a body design. We are going to be doing uh, the large body here. And this video is going to be a bit different from the other ones that I have in the past. So instead of being a really long video, this was going to be quite a bit shorter. I myself am going to go through all of the stuff of the vehicle, so the panel type, engine stuff, and whatnot, etc. And then after I've done that, we're going to go over all of the parts and stuff and why I chose what I did for a few minutes. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a time lapse of me building the vehicle, and then we'll drive it in BMG Drive for a few minutes. So it's going to be a lot shorter of a video, probably around 10 or 15 minutes, I don't know. So without further ado guys, I'll see you guys in I guess just a second or so. So here is the car, everything's done except for designing the body itself and then driving it of course in Beam and G. Uh, so before we actually look at the vehicle and the specs of it, uh, I changed the body around just a bit so it's you know the, the general idea of what the body style I want. So of course it still has a bit of Porsche DNA because this body is modeled after a Cayenne. Uh, the front end's a bit more squared off, it's a bit more brutish. And this is sort of modeled after a Range Rover you know, Sport SVR. Uh, let's take a look at the engine first here. So on the first page we can see, so it's a 4.4 liter V8. Uh, that's what this is, so a 90 degree V8 twin turbocharged direct injection engine, all aluminum. Uh, so what this was sort of modeled after as well was a BMW engine, a BMW uh, V8, 4.4 liter, you know, the, the corporate 4.4 that BMW uses. Twin turbo, this is made a bit differently, so it's still all forged internal, so, you know, pretty fancy, but not crazy fancy. Actually, we can probably... I don't know why I had such a uh, good piston, so this is probably fine, right? It does not rev this high. We can actually lower the crank down to forwards as well, save some money. <laughs> yeah, let's just see. This is fine here, so it is a full forged internal, so lightweight forged and just regular forged steel. Uh, the engine itself, so it's got 525 horsepower and 630 pound-feet of torque, so it is a very torquey engine. I mean, you know, and also the torque is around 4,000 RPM, which is pretty low for automation because the turbos aren't that realistic, obviously. But uh, they're working on it. Uh, the efficiency is terrible, so 13% efficiency is terrible. The mileage is actually a lot worse than what I wanted as well, but there's this, it, it, it's hard when you don't have a proper automatic gearbox and stuff. If we go here to the next page, so it's got a pretty high variable valve profile, uh, pretty high overall, actually. Compression is 11 to 1, which is pretty standard for a twin turbo engine of its size. Uh, 32 and a half PSI and of course ball bearing turbo so everything else is pretty basic fuel system here so we'll look at the engine again while we're doing this so revs to 7500 rpm a pretty high you know revving v8 engine not as high as some things like a uh, you know a mustang gt350 which revs to 8250 but i think the bmw ones rev to around 7000 7500 premium fuel only obviously it's got pretty low ignition timing it's pretty retarded uh, the fuel mixture is quite high as well. Keep this thing running at such a high PSI. It does make a lot of torque though, which is cool. Uh, so uh, performance intake, this is a, you know, a performance oriented SUV. You know, everyone uses SUVs nowadays. Direct injection, obviously, and then uh, first. The exhaust setup. So it is dual exhaust, two inch exhaust only. So it's quite small, which does strangle the engine a bit. But, uh, you know, of course, if we open it up, we'll have more knocking and stuff. So I'm going to leave it as is. And, uh, you know, it's also pretty much peak efficiency that I can get with this. And if I actually open it up, it'll it'll fiddle with the efficiency and stuff. Like, we, we can get more horsepower. Oh, actually, I, I mean, no knocking yet, but I like keeping it in the realm of realism. So I think the Range Rover has, like, 550 horse. This is five. This is less horse, obviously. Uh, more torque, though, than any of its competitors. Right? Uh, last but not least, so the engine is pretty heavy, 550 pounds. It is quite quiet for a, you know, a, a big loud V8. There is full exhaust on it, you know, straight through and catalytic converters. Again, this is a luxury performance SUV. It's not like a, it's not a Ford, you know, uh, Ford Explorer or, or anything, you know, it's not a Ford Explorer, a Chevy Tahoe. It's 
you know, it's a Range Rover, it's a, it's a BMW, it's something high-end, right? It's a high-end luxury performance SUV. Now we can go here to the next pages here, so drivetrain, sticking in the realm of realism again, you know, my sort of theme of this, theme of this car was steal some BMW parts, so it's got a BMW-esque V8, a BMW-esque gearbox, so it's got an advanced 8-speed automatic gearbox all with the drive. 0 to 60 isn't 4.3, which is kind of slow for the amount of power it's pushing. The Range Rover has, you know, a little more horsepower, way less torque though, and about the same weight, and they can do it about 4. So I did my best to get it close enough. Uh, of course, electric limited slip diff, and it's pretty good spacing, it's pretty low top speed, it's about 300. Yeah, it's, we, we limit it at 300 kilometers an hour, which is pretty fine. It can do a bit more, but we don't need it to go any higher. Uh, it's got sports tires, 22 inch rims, so massive rims, massive tires, all aluminum, obviously. Quite expensive. I think 305s is like is quite large for any SUV. Actually, I think it's like a Grand Cherokee Trackhawk size. But uh, brakes, vented disc brakes, four pistons all the way around. Actually, we need bigger brakes now because I changed the rim size. So the biggest possible, you know, 17 inches all the way around. Actually, I didn't I didn't play around with this. So let's change the bias just a bit. Uh, this thing's a bit front heavy. So front brakes gonna do more of the stopping. And that's fine. It's got cooling flaps and a fully clad under tray. Now this is just for nothing besides MPG. As you can see, it gets just around 11 miles per gallon. So this is the miles per gallon of a tractor, performance of a decent performance SUV, and no looks yet, but we'll get there. So this one is just a four seater. Like I said, this is like a high performance or performance SUV. So it's, it doesn't need a lot of seats. This is like the, you know, the, the top of the line trim. Of course, if we had like a, another trim level of a vehicle, it would have more seats. Uh, sports seats, premium uh, HUD, so heads up display, premium, all the rest is standard sliders and stuff. Uh, safety and stuff, so it's just standard 10s, even though this is a 20, 2019 is what it's supposed to be. Actually, but did that change anything for a standard 10? Standard 10s or advanced 10? Standard 10s, I think we had, yeah. Keep it on advanced 10s, 2020, but this is more like a 2019 vehicle. Uh, so it's not, you know, you know, bright, it's not in the future, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an older vehicle. It's on its last legs. It's fine. So if you go to suspension here, so it is active comfort suspension, just like, you know, something like a BMW or a Range Rover. So it's comfortable. Uh, it's geared for comfort, but also there's a, you know, a bit of, so it's set to sportiness on the preset. So it's a bit sporty. It's a bit lower than if we just had it in regular comfort, I think. It's a bit lower. We just set the sports here, then I raised up it. So it is it is still an SUV. So 11 and a half inches of ground clearance. I don't think oh, right now. That's fine. 11 and a half inches of ground clearance, pretty good. Um, and we'll keep the all this stuff just the default, yeah, sport. Well, we don't need to go into this that much, you know. I don't want to fit around with the suspension. Last page here, so 11 miles per gallon is the average. That's terrible. But, uh, you know, when you're spending 75 grand on an SUV, then that's, that's not bad. And now... You know, a BMW or a Range Rover, those things would be quite expensive. I, I'm in Canada, so like a Range Rover or like a BMW X5M would be $100,000 probably Canadian. So uh, this, I mean, this is American, so it's 75 grand, which is pretty good here. Uh, the cost is 24,000, of course, the engineering time, just ignore that because uh, it, it's it's just impossible to get down pretty low. This is 10 years of engineering time plus, like what, crazy. Uh, and it's all pretty much standard sliders and the cost is fine. So the service cost, it's pretty expensive to service every year, over $2,000 which is not terrible. I mean, for a, you know, for a regular car, it's a ton, but for this car, it's not terrible. Uh, cargo space and whatever, it's all pretty good. Passenger volume is fine. Uh, all, this, all the specs, it, it's, it's rounded. It's well-rounded, I guess, but it's not, it's not great at anything. If we go to markets here, like, uh, it's fine at, um, it's a fine GT car. It's a good GT car, I guess. It's a good muscle car. Utility sport luxury. So it's that's probably the best of the is utility sport luxury. And everything else is, yeah, GT. Let's just say sports, you know, SUV that costs in the seventy thousand dollar range, and it's gonna have some good looks as well. So what we're gonna do uh, is just look at yeah, this is the last page or design page. So it is yeah, a dual red cam, of course, four valve engine. It weighs uh, forty eight hundred pounds, which is right in line with another performance SUV around the same weight. Weight distribution is pretty good, so it's a little bit uh, front heavy, which is gonna happen with a big V8. But if we put like a V6 or something in here, it would be better. Uh, it is quite long, nearly 10 feet, but 112 inches wide, Jesus, yeah, it's 10 feet wide, that's crazy, it's very wide, it's a very wide vehicle, 186 inches long, so it is, I don't know, it's like 15 feet long, I don't know, I'm, I don't use that much, easy, and, uh, 78 and a, well, 78 and a half inches, uh, no, no, 78 inches wide, 
118 long, and the wheelbase is 115, so that's it. That's not bad. It's only, uh, it's less than 10. Uh, so I think that's all we have to do for this one. We can do it on the test track. I think we'll do that, actually. I haven't done the test track before, but we're going to do that, and we're just going to speed it a little bit so it gets them. We'll see what the time is. It finished in 2 minutes and 17 seconds. We'll just say 2 minutes, 17 seconds flat. And what I'm going to do today in Automate or Beam and G Drive is just try to beat that record. Maybe just do a bit of driving, then try to beat it. We'll do a quarter mile, etc. So uh, without further ado, guys, hope you enjoy these time lapse of me uh, building the car. Alright guys, we are back here. Before we jump into BMG Drive, I'm just going to go for just the design of the car and sort of, you know, if it's based off anything or whatnot, then we'll go into uh, BMG and drive it. We are in the uh, the photo booth mode, basically, so we can go around and see the car here. All angles and stuff with pretty awesome lighting. The car looks a lot better in this than it does just in the, uh, the studio there. Uh, so as you can see from the front here, it's got a little bit of like a Mercedes, you know, a, a GLS style grill. Originally I had like GLS style headlights, so headlights are sort of full of this, but I didn't want to copy a Mercedes Benz. So I went with my own, you know, similar but different kind of things. So it's got a little bit of Mercedes vibe here, I think. A little bit of uh, a, a Hyundai or maybe some, even some Chinese cars. So it, you know, it looks, you know, not crazy expensive, but you know, then again, this is, you know, a premium sports SUV. You know, it's 75 grand for the highest end. The base one would be like 40 or 45 grand, so it's, you know, the highest end that you compete against like a Range Rover. And the low end is like a Ford Explorer, I guess, is what I sort of went with, I guess. So it's a uh, sports SUV. It's also comfortable. Very, very small LED turn signals there. Then a uh, big, you can't really see the light here, but it's a um, a running light or a fog lamp kind of at the bottom. Nice big black rims, all black wheels. I could have went with like a black chrome, but just black looks good. As you can see here, so the trim is black and white, of course. And then there's uh, the blue calipers. You can't see in this light that well, just a little bit here. As we go back here to the back of the vehicle, so it is called the Mammoth SS, or Super Sport is what it's called, but you know, just as SS because I didn't want to write out Super Sport. That would, would have been a lot. So it's the Mammoth SS 4 power. You know, I just wanted to have 4 power there. It's like the all wheel drive badge. You know how you know, Volkswagen has, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Four, Audi has, no, Volkswagen has 4 motion. You know, Audi is Quattro. Mercedes Benz has, uh, what, uh, something power i think and then you know bmw's x drive etc so they have the one called four power just some generic name for their all-wheel drive system uh nice big quad exhaust tips even though they're not really exhausted but they, they look like it the grills and then uh we come back to the side so it's a nice it's a big suv 
There's a ton of downforce on this thing, actually. Uh, top speed is still 300 kilometers an hour, I think, but it's uh, 0 to 60 is 4.4. I think it was 4.3 before. One thing that I'm going to add before I bring it in to um, Demon G Drive is just I'm just gonna add a um, a dual panel, like a dual sunroof for like a big panoramic sunroof, I think, just because it, it needs that obviously for it being nice to be this expensive. There we go. Then a nice big final pan of the grill here. It's kind of like Hyundai styling almost, like the Genesis. Like the older Genesis, like a G80 or G90, or the actual Hyundai Genesis sedan. Um, does look Korean, a little bit, a little bit of Korean, a little bit of like Japanese, or not Japanese, I mean Chinese, like a little bit of like, you know. It's not the most expensive car in the world, it's not the most luxurious, it is, it is a good car though. And now we're here in Beeman G Drive. Before we actually start driving the car, or the SUV, I guess in this case, uh, we forgot to actually start the vehicle in automation to see what it sounds like, but I think you know what a generic V8 sounds like, and this thing doesn't sound much different. Uh, just a, you know, a, you know, a V8 with mufflers. It does sound good. I wish the exhaust could come out of it. I wish there's more exhaust tips, actually, but... I'm gonna launch it from probably five or 6,000 and keep it in sport mode. So 13, pretty much 13 flaps, 13.03. That's not bad for a first run. We'll do one more. So 0 to 62 was around mid four. I'd say, I think it was four seven. That wasn't too bad for 0 to 62. 0 to 60 is probably four five, so. And we are finally at the automation test track in Beeman G Drive. Now we are going to launch the car from a seven and a half thousand RPM and try to beat our time of two minutes and 17 seconds. Uh, if we don't mess up, I think we can do it. Win or lose, you know, this car is still a terrible element for the track at all. It does suffer from pretty bad understeer, so we're going to have to just full power through this turn here. Oh no, slow down a bit more. Well, full power. We're good, we're good, we're still good. We're still good. Get back on the track. There we go. I'm going to cut this corner here because we can. Yep. And brake, 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 E-brake. And full throttle here. There we go. Coming into 40 seconds here on the first big bend. And we're braking nice and early here. And full power coming out of the bend here. 110 kilometers an hour first checkpoint, 49 or so seconds first checkpoint. I think it was 45 in automation, so I, I think we're close. If we can get within 10 seconds of the uh, automation time, I'll be happy. Without a steering wheel, I don't I don't think I'm right now as good of a driver as I could be. There we go, full power here. Just coasted through that turn just a little bit. We're going to break here coming up at around 150. We're breaking now. And we're breaking fully here at 50 again. Look at that understeer in full effect here. We can actually even turn in and full power out of the turn. Nice big straight away. One minute, 25 seconds through the second checkpoint. And we're going to break at 100 now. We're breaking, 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 accelerating, breaking. And I'm on. Oof. Ooh, that was close. We're good though. We're still fine. We're still fine. I tried to power slide that turn just a bit too soon. That was pretty cool though, I must admit. <laughs> we're at one minute, 45 here coming on this nice, nice turn. And full power and braking through this bend. And parking brake just a bit here because we can't actually stop in time. We're just under two minutes now. We are approaching uh, a couple last turns. We're just over two minutes. And braking. And parking brake. Come on, though. Come up to the last bends here. Oh, come on. We're good. We're good. And he crashes on the very last bend. Of course he does. But I, I think we'd have been very close to the actual time here. We're just 10 seconds off. Which is my, which is my goal. I ran 10 seconds off. Yeah, we'll just keep going here full speed. Uh, so we got 230, of course. 49 seconds on the first, which is a bit slower. 125 in the second, which I think was a bit faster. I think it was 130. And then on the, on the third, uh, we we're at 217, obviously. Look at that crash. Wow. Uh, so we did get 230. Not terrible, of course. I crashed on the last bend. Well, without that crash, I don't think we'd have beat it, but it would have been pretty close. It would have been probably in the low 220s, maybe 221, 222. 
we're lucky here. I don't really do too much vehicles on this track, even I just do mostly just drag races and just, you know, free roam here. But uh, not a bad time overall, we're just gonna go to uh, free roam and spawn the car back in. We'll just drop it around a little bit longer here. We'll take a little bit of turns and see just how it handles actually on regular conditions. We're gonna go this way. It is quite fast. It sounds pretty good too. I wish there was pops and crackles because that'd be kind of cool, but you know. The car itself looks pretty good, sounds pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, if you guys are interested at all, leave a comment down below and I'll actually link another, uh, I'll, I'll uh, pop in with uh, a download link for the vehicle if you want or whatever. Uh, let me know also what other vehicles you want to see, uh, see me create. If you want me to create, you know, a vehicle for you or model a vehicle after something. If you want me to model a, a Ford Mustang or a Ferrari La Ferrari because they got that body style now or whatever. If you want me to make a vehicle, leave a comment down below. Make sure to check out my other cars, of course, on the channel. Um, and also feedback on my videos is appreciated too. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.